All right, welcome back to another animation analysis. And this time it's going to be Toy Story 4, the full movie. <laughs> now, nah, not, it's not going to be two hours long, but I want to pick out a couple of scenes and sequences that I thought were super, super cool. Now I'm going to start off at the beginning, right off the bat, just because I love stuff like that when you have changes in the logo. It has nothing to do with animation, but I love this also in a very subtle way. You have the light is here and as it transitions, you still have a bigger spot here, but come on, right off the bat, the renders, so good. Usually when I do a movie analysis, it's just like half, like half an hour for me going, come on, look at those renders, but come on, look at those renders. So good. But anyway, so we're going to take a look at this and kind of the different properties of things and things that I like. So for instance, take this one. One of the reasons why I like sets is because sets will give you different options to showcase body mechanics. And here's one, right? So you have, this could have been a flat surface, someone running, maybe doing a jump or something like that from a side view static camera, which is a classic thing that you do for students. But let's pretend there's a chair, there's a table, there's this. Now this is more complex because you have another character, but look at what's going on here. You have the mechanics of a character getting up, then into a jump, so that's one variation, and then the jump is a different mechanic. Also with this to push off with a little bit of extra animation there, which is always awesome. Then on top of that with another character, pulling the other character up, so you have a pull another weight mechanic. Now look at how long the shot is. Let's play this back again. Bam, bam, done. That is not long. This is not your 20 second shot that a lot of people do. It doesn't take long, but look at what you've shown. Lots of different mechanics and different relationships there. Next up is this reaction here with <laughs> what he's seeing this. It's something else where I often recommend to students that they should do short shots, just practice things. And this could be your practice of a take where you see just that moment of ooh, what is there. So you have a slight change in the eyebrow as well. Then you have that little going back and as you patient, you got shoulders going up. You have a bit of a squash in the face. Maybe a tiny bit of a stretch there. Squash goes down. The hat actually goes up. This over one frame, but you see the enormous drag in the arms. You don't want to cheat too much with the physics. And then bam, into this. And even that is a massively fast recoil over one frame but I love that through all of this you still have a very clear view of those arms and that hand it's great and again this in real time watch this let's take my scribbles off short but it's something very very quick for you to practice and this goes back into you know my love for sets adding things where you can have that person hiding but it has to go over and because it's somewhat rounded kind of just a different angle changes and because of those changes in the surface and the way it goes around the corner, different opportunities for you to change things where it's not just sideways, but it goes then back. Character does a change 90 degree and then into that look there. Also, don't forget you push this back. The hat is going to be pushed back against the wall. And this is why I always recommend to add sets. Not that you have to make it super, super complicated, but it gives you all kinds of uh, opportunities to have a bit more original or at least for you, even yourself, more interesting mechanics with this term for instance. Right afterwards, I thought this was kind of cool where, I mean, they're pretty far away. You could technically make them this big. So you could practice full body mechanics. You can do a run, maybe do the run cycle. You plug them in, copy, paste, copy, paste, do some changes. But what I like about this is the contrast of you have far away characters. And again, probably for a real, a bit closer. So there's a bit more to see. But then what happens is this character comes in. It's a surprise. It takes away from the focus because now we're in front of that element and then you can go into to back into a full face animation where this could be longer this could be with a lip sync this could just be pantomime but i like that it gives you the opportunity to do a full body mechanics showcase for your reel and then with a surprise moment a facial animation close-up moment there next up we have this moment here where they say Operation Pull Toy. It is one of the things that I'm a massive, massive fan of head accents. And let's look at Woody first here, where he has that little moment of thought going up with a little bit of almost like a moving hold anticipation into the next turn. And you can see this, how he goes forward in Operation Pull Up and then Toy, one more thing. And the same thing for her too. 
as you go back and i mean he continues in that line here too as he keeps on talking it's one of the things where a lot of times with student work it's they do body mechanics and then there's that the facial aspect of it the lip sync and it's you know it seems very separate they do an eye pass they do a mouth pass but if the jaw goes down and the specific energy where they yell or something it, it's not quite reflected in the head action with enough head accents too so i would always pay attention to that and it's like a little peep you can see that same thing on her just it's a lot more subtle but even here you got it when it says you got it woody you just have to think about the the ups and downs of your audio of the energy do you want to mimic the you got it woody you know where you have kind of a da, 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 and you want to do that in the head as well maybe completely copy paste the waveform in a way and then minimize it and maybe take one of them out from a contrast but i would think about that when you do head accents and you have close-up animation this i just wanted to add just because i love when you have different properties of the toys especially in those movies where like this character doesn't seem to be able to bend their arms and you got I love the contrast and these little guys, how they just, they barely move. And then with the Barbies where it's all very, very straight. Love this. It's just so cool. It's so much fun. It's one of the things where they always talk about, oh, you got to offset things. But sometimes it's just also a lot of fun and has an extra contrast of they're all doing the whole action in sync. Oh, look at that. Sorry, I had to go ahead and stop this. Look at that. Look at the renders. I mean, this movie, especially towards the end, it's just beautiful. And this moment is something that where actually I did a series on my channel. I put in a uh, card there, how the environment can help your animation in terms of reactions and more creativity. I mean, they open the window and you see, I mean, there's rain, there's a lot of wind. Look at what happens to them. You see this blows back. He has a re reaction there. She has a reaction. He has a reaction. If you have something like this, A, I mean, this is besides a weight assignment, right, where you lift this up. This gives you an opportunity for changes. Everybody is going to react differently to an outside force, be it cold, uh, wind, I don't know, rain or hail or whatever. So you imagine there's fire here. Um, to me, that these are all opportunities, again, to do something different, to add contrast, to be more original. But also from a very picky point of view, you do open a window. So there's you know a certain environmental uh, status going away inside and there's one outside. Your character would react if there's something different here than inside. In this one, Woody goes down and he keeps running. This is something about contrast. Technically, you could do a cycle of just kind of strain, run, walk, and it would just be this, right, going forward. But watch how he runs or what he does. Goes forward, whoop, and then does that. It's very small, but watch it again. Right there. And it's one of those things that if you have a prolonged moment of repetitive action, think about when you can put in contrast. So instead of repeating itself, he has that little uh, extra strain and jump into that action there. So that's something to pay attention to when you do have something where characters running, walking, or doing something that's repetitive, so it doesn't become boring. It's not like, oh, that's just a cycle we just plugged in. This could be a good opportunity for you to do something a bit more interesting with contrast. Also love this here. <laughs> just with the lighting and the silhouette. And I love this too, with just that, that, I love that pose, how it's just so unsure in that face, how it goes up. Oh, it feels like even the hat is down with the rain. It's so good. Now, here's something else. And again, this is something else in my series where the environment can uh, affect your animation, the thought process, and also body mechanics. And the character comes out and it's raining like crazy. He puts the hoodie on. And here's the thing. He has to hold this. This already forces asymmetry in your posing. There's a bit of a lean because of it as well, because he doesn't want to bring the face up and have the rain in his, in his face. And you can see how with that run, arms together, it's just, it would be a completely different run if it was really, really hot and he would just be walking or running. I don't also if it's if it's hailing the pain of it, that would be different. So once again, if you have something like this and you put a character in environments, well, maybe make it rain or it's really hot or it's snowy or just windy. And that will change the mechanics and the actions of your character. And I don't focusing a lot on this whole beginning, but there's so many awesome moments that I just wanted to point out. So for instance, when she knows that someone is behind her, like the pose doesn't change. I love the attention to detail where the eyes are still moving. She still has all of that, but nothing else is moving. because She's a toy, she can't. There's a human behind her and I look when she touches her, beep, it goes back into, well, that is the pose that the toy has and it stays even through all of this. This tiny, tiny, I just love that stuff. Something else that was cool, I actually cut that out. As you can see, the window is open. 
and the parrots come and shut that window in one quick swoop. It goes BAM! And that closes this and he has to go back. Now, why am I saying this? Because I like the contrast of it was important to shut this window because of the surprise moment and to add energy to the scene because of that quick surprise moment. But look at the contrast when we have this here, when they open the window, watch this. Right there, see that? You got that little, it opens up and it's a fast moment, slows down a bit. That's a like very, very tiny change in the spacing, stops a bit and then one more time to open it up even more. Just because they are A, not as strong, like a human can bring this down much, much easier way. And a toy with less strength, of course. So there's that, if you just want to be picky about this. But again, just the way they open this, there are many reasons why you would open or pull or do anything with an object. And think about that too. When your character, let's go back here. All right, let's pretend the shot would be this where someone closes a window. Well, think about who is that character? What's the strength of the character? What's the material? Is it easy to push or pull or whatever it is? But then think about the situation. Is it more important to, to close it slowly for whatever story point or quickly? Do you want to showcase that it is hard to open or to close and so on and so on. So if you do add a character into a set, think about who is the character? What, what is their relationship to that set? The scale, the strength, is it for the first time? But also storytelling wise, is it important to open something quickly or to open this slowly? It's very picky, but I had to point that out. I thought it was very, very cool. It was a tiny little detail. Speaking of detail, when you get to this sequence here, I love that too, besides the awesome renders, where he is really leaning in because he wants to A, stay here, but he wants her to stay here. And you can see that in her movement. See this? She goes back, he goes forward, she goes back because she knows it's okay. It's okay to leave, but he doesn't want to do that. And I love that too. Watch this when you have her, when he says her line. And also, this is very subtle when, when she goes, But Woody, I'm not Andy's toy. I love that too. Is that it's it's almost like there's a resignation, there's a sadness, but it's like also a sigh, but also let it go. It's okay. And I like that it ends with it's a very subtle, but watch how she goes down. Oh, it's so subtle, but I love it. It's not like, I don't know, Andy's toy. And she's not, you know, I'm exaggerating, not bouncing around or whatever it is, but it just adds that little. Up and down. Oh, it's so good. So good. Same thing here. Time for the next kid. And everything is just slow and soft and down and almost retreating. And I love this. This is extremely subtle, but the posing on her face. I don't know who animated this, but if you know, or whoever, if maybe, maybe the animator is watching, who knows, but so good it's very subtle the slight head tilt and just the asymmetry in the face just the way she has that with her look the posing of her eyes look at how much she turns and then brings up her eyes like this so cute with the face and also what's really cool is that she says her line and keeps their mouth open it's one of those things where again with students a lot of times they do lip sync and then they close back the mouth into a default pose just tiny, tiny things are very subtle, but I love it. Love it. So good. So subtle. So subtle how she just looks with that pose. Just that little head nod. Love it. That whole beginning sequence has so much awesomeness. Also this, if you watch the movie, there's a little throwback of that towards the end. Because he almost decides to go, but sees Andy. And also this here, when she has that, that look, <clears throat> it guides the audience to there, cut to there. I mean, it also cuts to Ginova's hands. How can you not look at those hands? But then oh, I'm alone in this. She has to go. And now she gets closer. Again, so think about when you have two characters. I love this, that he's alone and silhouetted. But when you have two characters, think about when is it is okay to bring a character forward? When is it okay to retreat a character? Why is it an emotional distance? Like in this case, she's okay to go and he needs to stay here. Just think about the dynamics of what's the distance between two characters and to, are they supposed to get closer? Are they supposed to go away? All of these things you should think about, even if it's on a subtle level. It's very cool. Again, this is a, if you watch the ending, that hat cheek ending uh, is in the ending as well. 
great too. But man, lots of subtle stuff with just tiny head moves, tiny looks, tiny changes in the eyebrows. So good. Then I want to fast forward to this just a bit, just because usually, again, in, for students, it's recommended that the camera is locked and then just focus on whatever you know, animation you have in the scene, because you should focus on animation. Because also camera work is difficult to do, also especially to animate your own camera. But what I want to show here is that once you do start somewhere, this could be TV, uh, in, a, in a studio, in a major feature studio, or even smaller, you're gonna have to deal with A, a character interacting in a set, but also with a moving camera. You have to be able to animate towards a moving camera. This may sound simple, but I can tell you it's not. Every now and then, there's some things that happen with the camera that you really have to change your animation to make it work. Well, look at this whole sequence. I love this. Again, there's nothing specific in terms of animation, you know, like spacing or whatever they want to point out, but just the complexity of the shot, also the length of the shot to animate the whole thing, but probably in, I'm assume, I'm assuming this would be cut up into separate shots wherever those blend points are, right? When the face gets close or, and this happens with the wipe to the title. It's probably when then another animator could go in. I would feel bad if someone had to animate the whole thing. But this is Q2 in terms of even this, if your animation is, I want to show body mechanics. All right, well, have a character hold different things. It's not one object, there might be separate things. So a little bit of a readjustment and re-grab could happen. A little bit of a turn in their path. So the animation is not someone walking straight, it's a slight turn to this. And then a sit down, right? So what if your animation assignment is a sit down, which is a very common assignment. And you can have all of this. The sit down incorporates this, and then this piece, which also moves. Also, cool transition. But this is fairly complicated to animate. This whole thing, at least you don't see the legs and the feet. It's a bit more forgiving. But this is an interesting sit-down assignment. I love it. Going back to this. And again, same thing with this. If this is your, maybe an assignment is the weight assignment, right? So instead of a box lift, it could be some, something like this. You could start the shot. I'm going to put something down and I'll play with this. I'm going to lift this up. It's not super heavy, but still. Well, I love this too. This, again, this is why I love putting characters into an environment and with sets and set pieces where you could do something like this. Just the cuteness of a character jumping, landing onto this, giving us different body mechanics and reactions of a little bounciness, but not too much. A roll over for contrast. So good. Also clever wipe again. Again, this whole montage is so good. I mean, basically this whole movie, you can just watch the whole thing in just every two seconds. It's so good, so good, but I'm not gonna linger on this but i do want to linger on this watch on the face watch your face this is super picky but watch the light so good you're going what it's because there's a window this is sunlight and because of the clouds the sunlight is going to change even though this is the focus there's all that detail in there even in the lighting come on i love this i love stuff like that Next up is a small little moment, but I love stuff like that too. If you are already putting a character in an environment and with a little prop like this hat, be mindful of interactions. So as he goes forward, look at this, beep, goes straight into here and pushes the hat up. It's a tiny thing, I'm telling you, I love stuff like that. This I thought was really cool. And actually, I have that noted somewhere. I thought it was a West Wing episode where character has coffee, a coffee mug, a coffee cup, and needs to go through security and has to use something both hands. So he puts actually the coffee mug and bites down on that edge to then use both arms. But I thought this is you know a different application of the same idea. Putting this in here and then lifting this and the detail that I thought was really cool. Watch the weight of this. Boop. Tiny detail, but I love it. This is heavier than, not that he thought, but it's in a cool moment of this is not paperweight. It gets off the edge. There's no more support of the table. And now look at this, see that? He got that drop and his leaning forward because of it in with a nice swing at the end very cool now the introduction of sporky is also fantastic just in terms of material and contrast the little wiggly arms so this to me and this is why i love this franchise too is that each toy is made out of different materials so they all move differently and they all have a lot of different restrictions and it's so much fun to see this and the attention detail of this <laughs> Sorry, this cracks me up. <laughs> this is how he runs. Also, when he picks him up, I love this here. <laughs> how the hand is on his face. Because again, the focus is here. And I love that whoever did this is thinking about that moment. And he puts his arm down. Oh, it cracks me up. I love it. 
But then he keeps on pulling Forky here. Watch this. <laughs> I love this. Watch the feet. Ooh, just a little, little wiggle in there. The the imperfections of the surface as he pulls. So good. Also, just all those ideas of he's trying to get away, holds him up. I like he holds him on the face there. It's around the cheek. It's a great little grabbing point. And then look at the detail. It's all the way up, right? Feet are there. And as he continues, <laughs> sorry, it cracks me up. Forky slides down. <laughs> and he got that with the mouth all the way up into the face. So good. Also, just the, the timing and the contrast of all that movement, right? And then you have that. Bang. Look at that. Even that little thing. I love that little moment there when he exits. And oh, so good. Again, same thing with all of this. The wiggling and then that pulling. It must be so much fun to animate this and just keeping the properties of, of the material in mind. And <laughs> Same thing here. It doesn't just slide down. It has that slight lean this way. And then a faster drop, a little pause, and then a drop again. Again, everything in service of contrast and just not even and linear and boring timing. And even this, even this, he could just pull it up. But no, he knows it's going to slide down again. And what does he do? He pulls this out right there just to tighten this. And because he tightens it, it affects the body. And the body has a bit of a move here, left and right, mostly left there. And because of that, it moves the eyes as well. I mean, you can go really frame by frame. The attention to detail, it might seem minor, but I love all that stuff. It's just masterfully done. Next up in this, I love that they put this on his feet. And this is purely just for entertainment value. I love, I don't know who animated this, but whoever did this, bravo. I love this. Come on, look at this. The sliding. And because of the material, you can break technically the joints like that. Look at this. The complexity of all this, look at that, the drag on that arm and then the setting all this beautiful pose and nice silhouette while he keeps going. It's great. And look at this. You got that drag with a beautiful curve there. Same thing here. And then you got the delay on the legs and then they catch up with that. And then the contrast and the and the funny idea of how he goes forward. Wee, wee. Come on, it's so good. Holy macro. Whoever did this, a raise. Give that person a raise. So good. All right, next up is this here. Again, in terms of mechanics and a little bit of weight, I think about, you know, you have to show weight and something interesting in terms of mechanics. Well, you got that little lip here. That's why I got this here. So you got that moment where I can hold on to this and also put the foot on there. And then you have holding on to this with a swing up with the foot, pushing this in. <laughs> I love this. I love Woody's poses, they're great. Those legs are great. Goes back in there, you can put a stretch on that arm, pew, pops, goes in here, and then watch this. That little hold, oh, and then you got a little, a little opportunity for that head face there, oh, that expression, and then that exit. Now watch this in real time, right? Let's go back. Go back here. How far is here? And you got go up, scramble in there, down. That's it. It's not long. You know what I mean, it's not 20 seconds, 30 seconds. And I'm guilty of this. If I ever animate at home, they're usually way too long. And you can show off so much awesomeness in a fairly short amount of time with very interesting and complex mechanics because of the set, because of that piece here that gives you that opportunity. So cool. Now, speaking of surfaces and sets, not these are sets, but these are characters, but look at this. That goes back into just the fun of this franchise where you have just so many different properties of like a, more of a wooden, solid body and maybe hands, but the rest is very loose because of that puppet style. Look at this. Sorry, I gotta frame through this. Those leg poses are so good. Look at that. So great. And then a clear moment on the face. It's just so good. You can really frame through that whole movie. Just absolutely fantastic. And then it goes back into just them, just the zombie-like nature, how they swing those arms, but they still, they all move differently. And even detail like this, this guy, bam! Just that little, little bump in there. And again, sets, contrast. This whole thing, this whole sequence here goes in fantastic. Uh, production design, environments, and rendering. 
so good. This is cool too, just seeing the properties because of that. That was a freaky face right into camera. So good. And same thing again with these characters because of how they're built. Just the axes and how they can actually move. But also wanted to show this just because it cracks me up. <laughs> but they're running the joke that no one high fives him. Oh, and he waits. But then watch this. As they go. Oh, no, I cut it out. Oh, did I not do this? I did not do this. Oh, I thought I did. There's this moment where they talk and then they give more high fives. And then he looks at Woody. Woody doesn't do anything. Woody actually turns and his arm just slowly, slowly, slowly goes down until he walks away. Oh, I thought I put that into my collection as well. So good. Again, whoever animated this, man, this is so good. Crack me up. Now, this is something where it was back in that series about environments. I think it was Stefan Schumacher's shot where the kid, and so you got the, the ground and you got a little pond or and then there's a log and the kid jumps up and whoa, and jumps onto a rope, swings and goes down. My whole thing is how the the log, because it's narrow, because it's tilted gives you all kinds of opportunities for asymmetry and just different mechanics. And this is the same thing here. As this character lands, you can see with this angled surface how the character has to get up. It gives you immediately asymmetry, more interesting posing, but also because it's narrow and I wouldn't say slippery, but look at Woody here. Whoa, that's that moment. All of that is because of this. So when you do have your character in a scene, it's just to me more interesting to have the character not be on a flat surface. Everything is always on a flat surface. Again, that being said, there are beautiful shots where there's nothing there. It's a flat surface and it's a character in an empty scene doing beautiful animation. But if you are putting in a set, I'm just saying, think about the elevation of it, the changes, the surface. Is it super slippery? This could be ice or something else where, you know, again, it would change its body mechanics, but it just adds more detail and more contrast. Speaking of contrast, I love this here too. That whole sequence and the lighting. I'm including this just because I'm a nerd and love Star Wars. And you got this where they recreate the cantina scene because we are kind of in a cantina with music. And he chops his arm off. We even have the Wilhelm scream. Arm is off. Again, whoever came up with this idea. <gasps> nerd! Nerd! And I love it. This goes back into the material of the character, but I love this too, where just the staging. He comes up and technically got the face and the camera looking up. And you can see how the body is and with the head, right? You got the head and it looks like he's almost looking down almost you can see this he's definitely not looking up but it's just to make him look more heroic and then you cut to the next shot look at this <laughs> i love this it's actually the reveal that he's small and he's on the head is tilted back which again is not in here and it's totally fine for cheats and this is something that if you do a shot maybe that's something that you want to do as well here you would animate and maybe it's like a, like here like a character introduction and you kind of build them up with a specific camera angle, whatever you want to do to make it with whatever special feel. And then you cut to this. And now you can show off full body mechanics and they can do something else. But you use this cut also for humor. So it doesn't always have to be all about beautiful animation in one frame or one shot. What about is there extra humor, extra, you know, your your sense of humor and your sense of, well, this is this is how I would do something dramatic or entertaining or sad or funny. Maybe it's through a cut and then the reel that the reveal that this is actually the angle. This makes sense. So maybe think about that. Maybe you're really, really good at establishing shots and paying them off across multiple shots and within a sequence. I love this too. How this bike moves. All that wiggly stuff. Oh man, this is so good. <laughs> so good. Then we have this one here, and I thought this was cool too. Maybe a bit trickier to pull off. And I would I don't know if I'm super sure if that could be something for your for your reel for students. Because I mean students would I can see them being hesitant and then doing something like this. But what am I talking about? I'm talking about this where the focus is on this character. And I'm including this here just because yes, this person is talking and you have lip sync. But you can push the depth of field even more and make this even blurrier. So it's just there for context. That here is a person saying something, but the main focus is on this character and just listening and reacting. I love this, that you don't see the mouth, you see nothing. All you see, eyes and eyebrows and the actions of head tilts and angles and changes. But if you are new to lip sync and you wanna practice something like this, this could be your setup. Could be looking someone like someone over a fence or a little kid over a 
bed frame like, i don't know whatever you do or maybe a kitchen counter and maybe talking hey man you should get those cookies and this is the kid oh should i really go out? i can't steal cookies and that's the content of the shop but you have somewhat lip sync that's blurry so you don't really have to worry about all the fine detail of polish and now you can practice eyes and look at this just the looks the darts the blinks the widening also love this by the way just the properties of those eyes how they go up and then they have that little little spring action there boring just a bit again because of the properties of this of this doll so good but tiny tiny stuff again blinks looks and even this when she would talk it just mainly sold through this and the shake in the head i think this could be an interesting setup for your shop now moving on to this this is interesting this is not nothing where it just might help you but i think nowadays mocap is used more and more in shots but even in cartoony work where i mean you have all of these characters especially if you watch the movie towards the end there's a lot of people there i mean it would be faster to add mocap in there and i mean they're still cartoony i mean if you look at their movements it's all still very cartoony but if you look at this character i wonder if this was mocap this could absolutely be mocap and i'm very curious anybody knows comment i'm very curious but to me from a production point of view it would make total sense shoot some mocap Apply it to, the, to all those characters much faster, and then do another pass of changing the timing of it, changing the posing, give this a bit more of a cartoony feel so it's consistent, right? You don't want something super photoreal in the middle of something cartoony, but I think that will make a lot of sense production-wise. Also, love this at the end, just the reactions, subtle head turns, but this is because I kept recording, so I'm gonna skip over this because it just makes, just makes me cry. <laughs> it's so sad, but it's so awesome. But once again, the subtleties of, of his looks and his head turns, and with her, and then a throwback when he gets off of this, you see the hands again, but that's the end of what I'm gonna look at here. So, not too long, this is pretty long. If you're still watching this, you are a champ, you are a nerd, I love it. That being said, if you feel like my nerding out for, I don't know how long, half an hour, uh, is helpful and you want to use that in your shots, you can, of course, sign up for my workshops. We can work together one-on-one. -on -one. You can sign up at any time. All the information is in the description. Other than that, I'm going to let this play out and say thank you for watching.